Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, APA calls on American Airlines to credit pilots furloughed after 9-11. NavWorks ADS-600B 2.0 system now flying. Change.org petition calls for legalization of flight training in Pipistrelle Alpha. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson at September 13th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In the aftermath of 9-11, nearly 3,000 American Airlines pilots were placed on furlough as the airline industry struggled to recover from the terrorist attacks. The last of those pilots were invited to return to work in 2013. Now, the Allied Pilots Association is calling on the airline to credit those workers for the time they were involuntarily on the sidelines when calculating seniority. APA has made the issue a top priority in negotiations with American. American is reported to be open to discussing the issue, but says it may not be addressed until the pilot's contract is open for amendment. Those negotiations will not begin until 2020. American spokesman Matt Miller said that they know that many American Airlines employees went through a lot in the decade leading up to the merger with U.S. Airways. Length of service is a contractual item that was negotiated as American and APA work toward the current joint collective bargaining agreement. Regardless, we recognize it's an important issue for many of our pilots. So it's something we are happy to discuss with APA during future negotiations, Miller said. American recently granted mid-contract pay increases to flight attendants and pilots, which led to the request for the length of service discussions. NavWorks is now shipping its ADS-600B 2.0 system for installations in experimental aircraft. The first aircraft are now flying. ADS-600B 2.0 is the second-generation version of the company's remote-mounted universal access transceiver. It provides 2020 compliance with ADS-B out. NavWorks has been shipping its ADS-600B 2.0 system since last month. The ADS-600B 2.0 system has a new internal WAS GPS compliant to FAR 91.225 and FAR 91.227. It features both ADS-B out and in with built-in Wi-Fi. The ADS-600B 2.0 system allows for a reduced installation cost and installation time, and interfaces to any operational transponder and altitude encoder. This is a significant step in our progress with certification of the ADS-600B. The company has found a viable solution to the long-delayed actions with the FAA. Our customers have been extremely patient and vocal in their support. Meanwhile, the ADS-600B has proven to be a solid contender in the race to fulfill the goals of the next-gen airspace project, stated Bill Moffitt, president of NavWorks. The FAA is offering a rebate of $500 for ADS-B installations applicable to certified fixed-wing aircraft only. While the company awaits FAA final approval of the ADS-600B 2.0 system, Operators are encouraged to take action quickly as the rebate reservation deadline is September 18, 2017. After the break, petition calls for legalization of flight training in Pipistrelle Alpha. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. A flight school attached to tomorrow's Aeronautical Museum in Southern California has posted a petition on Change.org asking the FAA to authorize flight training in the Pipistrelle Alpha electric airplane. 
According to the petition, the definition in Section 14 CFR 1.1 Life Support Aircraft in Section 6 defines the power plant as being a single reciprocating engine if powered. The petitioner is requesting a review, removal, or exemption of the word reciprocating for the legislation which he believes unintentionally restricts electric propulsion. The petitioner states that the word reciprocating is the only thing that prevents the fully ASTM-compliant Pipistrel Alpha Electro from being certified as a light sport aircraft. The petition states that electric aircraft, by their definition, produce no pollution during operation. If recharging is carried out by solar panels and or wind turbine, then electric aircraft fleet can operate without any adverse effects to the environment. Electric aircraft are ideally suited to training operations where they can fly within one hour of their designated airport, return, and recharge. As battery technology improves, the range of electric aircraft will be extended. Every week, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. EAA Chapter 252 is holding its annual Whitman Airport Pancake Breakfast in Airport Expo on September 16th from 7.30 to 11 a.m. The cost for adults is $7, free for pilots of home-built aircraft who fly in, and children under 10 is $3. The Young Eagles Rally will be held on September 16th at Newark Heath Airport at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Don't miss the Young Eagles Rally. There will be free airplane rides for kids ages 8 to 17. September 19th at Ferguson Falls Municipal Airport, IMC Club will hold its regular meeting following the EAA Chapter 1174 monthly meeting. Chapter meeting starts at 6. IMC Club meeting starts at 7 p.m. After these messages, Air Wisconsin pilots return to their routes. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Air Wisconsin pilots, represented by the Airline Pilots Association International, have returned to flying under the United Express banner after a more than 10-year absence. The largest privately held regional airline in the United States announced the new agreement with United Airlines earlier this year. The NBAA president will present its meritorious service to Aviation Award to Joan Sullivan Garrett and the John P. Jack Doswell Award to Preston Henney at the 2017 NBAA Business Aviation Convention and Exposition to be held October 10th through 12th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Drone company Toby Rich has just launched Smart Plane Pro FPV. The company says pilots can experience each movement their flights take with virtual reality glasses, while the initiative smartphone controlled is easy to operate. Smart Plane Pro FPV offers unique non-stop aviation style movement similar to real life planes empowering everyday people to take flight. Sutton Integrated has released Mars, a new technology that will aid in efforts to provide transparency to aircraft owners. Mars, or My Aircraft Reporting System, is a web application that works alongside existing accounting and flight software. Mars consolidates all aircraft data, financial reports of flight's fuel, maintenance logs, and all other necessary information into one hub where jet owners can view the information at any time. Brazilian airline GOL Linhas Areas Intelligence has announced to sell and lease back transactions with GE Capital Aviation Services for seven aircraft, including five Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft and two Boeing 737-800 Next Generation aircraft. Additionally, the company signed the direct opening lease of five additional 737 MAX 8 aircraft. 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. An all-volunteer group of GA pilots dubbed Operation Airdrop was established to fly critically needed relief supplies to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. In only a few days, it has grown to more than 150 planes and delivered countless tons of supplies, mostly to smaller airports in coastal Texas. While efforts in Texas are expected to continue for several more weeks, members of the group are already ready for Florida and Hurricane Irma. Right now, we're trying to get as many supplies down to BMT and IWS as we can on Tuesday and Wednesday. After that, we'll have to see where we're needed the most, Wolf said in a statement. OAD has a War Room-style operations center located in KDTO, manned by a software pro, a full-time controller, airlines logistics expert, and other pilots as mission control, Wolf said. The response we've been getting has been incredible. The outpouring of love, energy, and effort on everyone's behalf has shown the world just what Americans are capable of. Harvey was a once-in-a-life event, and it will take years for the area to fully recover. But we've been doing all we can to help our neighbors in their time of need, he added. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is trained daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.